All right, hello and good morning, good afternoon and good evening everybody and welcome to the latest OET All-Star session with Swoosh English. I hope everyone is doing really well and thanks a lot for checking in today. My name's Scott, I'm an OET teacher at Swoosh English and also the managing director of Swoosh English as well one of OET's premium preparation providers and all-stars. We've helped thousands of students pass their OET exams before with speed, certainty, and ease, and we'd love to do the exact same thing for you. So yes, once again, thanks a lot for checking into the session. I'm seeing lots of comments coming in today with candidates saying hello and welcome to the session today. I'm gonna to bring a few of these comments up on the screen. Just before we start the session today, guys, um, just let us know in the chat box, where you're from and what you're looking forward to in this session today. So let us know in the chat box where you're from and what you're looking forward to on this uh, in this session today. And of course, regardless of where you're watching today on Swoosh English's OET uh, Facebook and YouTube channels or on the OET official YouTube channel, make sure you like, follow and subscribe to the pages for some more great content from Swoosh and from OET. So hello, Princey, welcome to the session today. Hello to Nasser as well. Hello to Prab. Hello to Azra. Hello to Kieran. Hello to Connie. And a hello to Zeh as well, as well as lots of other comments that are coming in. I'm going to pop over to the YouTube channel and say hello to the hundreds of students that are over there and ready for today's session. So welcome to the session, guys. And I'm very much looking forward to having you guys in this session today. So without further ado, let's get stuck into this special OET All-Star session today. We're going to be doing, um, as I usually do, a mock speaking session. So what will this mock speaking session look like today? Well, there's going to be a bit of a preamble on the scoring criteria for OET, really essential for everyone who has taken the OET exam very soon, and even those who want to um, build up their skills and knowledge of the criteria for OET speaking. I'm going to give one student a chance to do a live OET role play with me today and get some great feedback on their OET speaking. But regardless, if you do or don't get a chance to do OET uh, speaking today, you still have plenty of opportunities for benefit, for listening and taking your own feedback on board. Plus I'll make sure I'll pinpoint you in the right direction to ensure that you're getting the awesome OET speaking feedback that you need. And of course, one way that you can do that guys is by joining our free masterclasses. Every Friday at 11 a.m. UK time, Swoosh English runs a free OET Fast Pass Masterclass. And guess what? You guys are invited. So what will you have in our free masterclasses that we run every Friday? Well, we're going to go through top tips on each subtest, including, of course, speaking. We're going to talk about the do's and don'ts of effective OET preparation so that you do more of the do's and you don't do the don'ts. I think I said that right. I did, didn't I? Do the do's and don't do the don'ts. We're going to go through um, various quizzes and interactive situations for you to know exactly what kind of student you are in your OBT preparation. And all of this will help guide you towards getting your OBT pass as quickly and as easily as possible, plus lots, lots more. So as the question says at the bottom of the screen, are you in? I'm sure you are. So there are three ways that you can join our special OVT Fast Pass Masterclass. There's actually one in two hours time. So you can jump off this session I'm doing and then come and join me in the next session that I'm running at 11 a.m. UK time. There's a few things that you can do, guys. First and foremost, you can click on the link that will be appearing in the chat box. So that wherever you are watching, there will be a chat box that will appear and you can click the link on in that chat box. The second option you can do is scan this QR code here. So if you've got your phone, bring up your QR code reader and then scan that QR code right there. So scan that QR code if you want to take access. It'll take you over to the page, you register, and then you're good to go for the session later today or next week if you want to attend that one. So guys, the link has appeared in the comments. Click on that link to register or scan that QR code. I will bring this information back up at the end of the session if you want access to our free series of masterclasses that we run at Swoosh English. Let us know in the chat box if you want to join these free masterclasses. I am sure you do. Okay, so let's get into a bit more of the class today, guys. And I want to ask a couple of questions to get to know you 
and your OET motives a bit more. So first of all, let us know in the chat box, guys, when do you plan to take your OET exam? Comment in the chat when you plan to take your OET exam. Maybe you've booked your OET exam already. It's coming up possibly tomorrow. Maybe it's coming up next week. Maybe in two weeks time, maybe in December, maybe January, maybe later. Maybe you haven't booked your OET exam at this point. So Jie has already said, I have already signed up. Great, so when is your test Jie? Let us know in the chat box. We got some other comments on the YouTube channels with students saying that they're taking their, Chino for example, is taking the exam on December 2nd. That's in about one month's time. We have Clive has said December 2nd as well. Stephanie has said January. We got Bawalia and Abanena have also said December 2nd. So in one month's time, that's good. Christine, December 16th. And a few other students as well are coming in saying the exact same things. Fantastic. Good, guys. Thank you very much. And Wasu, I'm going to bring up one comment from our own channel. As also said, December 2nd. So a lot of candidates here today already, I suppose, are saying that they're taking their exam on December 2nd. So that means you do have about one month of preparation time left to ensure you are ready for your exam. And that's the number one rule I have for everyone attending this session today, and that is book the exam when you are ready, okay? Make sure you only book the exam when you are ready. So I hope everyone who has their exam in December and January time are feeling prepared enough to book their exam during that date. Thank you very much, guys. So the next question I like to ask people is why they're taking the OET exam, the why. So when you have passed your OET exam, what do you want to happen? What is your dream once you've passed your OET exam? Why are you taking this exam and going through all of these steps to immigrate to a foreign land to practice another healthcare job or maybe career development, maybe to um, see friends and family, to travel, sense of adventure, sense of pride, whatever your motive is, let me know in the chat box why you are looking to do this exam. So we have San San has said to go to the UK as a nurse. So I'm sure there'll be a lot of candidates today who will be uh, aiming to head to the UK and work as a nurse. Winter has said GMC registration. So Winter, you are in the medicine field. Congratulations and good luck with your big move as well. Moving across over to the YouTube channel, we've got candidates saying Chino and Sadaf has said to be a UK RN and also to appear for the PLAB exam, Sadaf. So I'm guessing everyone here so far is saying that they're looking to improve their job prospects and live in another country uh, elsewhere in the world. Jay has also said, I want to go abroad as a nurse, probably in the UK. So you're still deciding where you want to go, Jay. Thank you very much. Fantastic, guys. Whatever your reason for doing this exam, whatever you want your outcome to be, keep that in mind. Keep that end goal in that dream in mind because that will motivate you forward and keep you um, aiming towards that goal of yours. So fantastic, guys. Thank you very much for all of those. I like asking those questions in this session. Okay, guys, so let's now get into the class itself. Uh, I like to, of course, preamble the speaking class by um, just understanding what we're trying to achieve in our OBT speaking exam. And that's where the scoring criteria comes in. So it might be no surprise to most of you, hopefully, that there are two sets of speaking criteria for OET. And the question I have for you is, what are they? What kind of speaking do you have to produce in the OET exam? And what kind of criteria are they called? So question to you guys, two answers. Who can let me know what the kind of speaking criteria is for the OET exam? I'm waiting for the comments to come in. There's a few still coming in and talking about the previous questions, but I'm looking forward to seeing these answers. What is the speaking criteria? No Googling, no cheating. Unless you don't know, then you can Google and cheat <laughs> if you'd like. But uh, hopefully we know this criteria like the back of our hand at this point, as it is super, super, super important that we are aiming our OET speaking to fulfilling criteria. That is the aim of this exam. And that, of course, reflects uh, a lot of the clinical communication skills that we need to talk about. I may have kind of almost given away an answer there by, <laughs> by talking about that. But who can tell me what they are? Josephine over the YouTube channel, 
She is the quickest. She has said linguistic and clinical communication. And now the other answers are coming in as well. But Josephine gives her a big pat on the back over on the OET YouTube channel. She was straight in and said that. And Sam on her own channel has also said it as well. Linguistic and clinical communication. Fantastic, guys. Well done. So they are the two criteria that we have to talk about in uh, our OET speaking exam. I'm going the wrong way in this PowerPoint. Let's go the right way. Um, so, yes, here we are. So there are two kinds of speaking criteria that we have, linguistic and clinical communi communication criteria. So what exactly are they? Well, I want to kind of keep things simple today and not really jump into the, the depths of this criteria because that could be a series of lessons in itself analyzing the criteria. I want to create a simplified metric today to kind of gauge your speaking skills. And I've taken them in the form of some questions. So linguistic criteria are your everyday language skills, your pronunciation, your grammar, your vocabulary, your intonation, et cetera, et cetera. Your everyday speaking skills. So in the speaking role play today, I'm going to assess candidates' linguistic criteria by asking a few of these questions in their performance. Firstly, did the speaker speak clearly and was easy to understand? That will take into account various aspects of speed, pacing, intonation, pronunciation, etc. Then we'll go into a bit more detail with some of these factors in the other criteria. Second question is, did they vary their pronunciation and intonation relevantly? So pronunciation is how we produce the various sounds of the English language, our consonants, our vowels, our diphthongs, our blends, etc. And then intonation is your pitch. Do you rise appropriately and fall appropriately or remain flat as appropriate to convey expression, sympathy, ask questions, end a sentence, etc., etc. Thirdly, did the speaker speak fluently and smoothly with few hesitations and false starts? So this is your pacing, okay? So fluency is the key word here. I just want to address a myth when it comes to fluency, uh, fluency about um, speaking. Fluency is not only about how quickly you speak. It's also how you piece together the fragments of a sentence. So are you able to speak fluently, aka at a reasonable speed, smoothly with few hesitations and false starts. So you're not hesitating as and ooms or repeating yourself. A false start might be when you repeat the sentence again to correct yourself, okay? So rule of thumb I have for every candidate taking the OET exam is think about the speed that you can speak in your native language and reduce that by about 20, 30% in English because you'll have to obviously think a little bit more in, uh, in English, of course, but it's not your native language. So ensure that you are speaking at a slightly reduced speed. Give yourself more time to pick up on the fluency and smooth these indicators. Okay. Top tip for everyone today. Fluency. Slow it. Slow it down a little bit compared to your native language to give yourself a more of a chance to pace and um, piece your, your markers together. As you can see, not even I am a perfect fluent speaker in terms of speed. I make mistakes too, even native English speakers do. So if we can do it, you can do it too. You don't have to be perfect. So number four is, did the speaker use appropriate language and tone, aka did you speak appropriate for your profession? Was it suitably professional, but not overly stuffy? You want to be accessible in your language as well, okay? And then five, did the speaker use relevant and correct vocabulary and grammatical structures? So was your um, complexity okay? And was your range okay as well? Tip I have for this linguistic criteria is not to make your grammar and vocabulary overly complicated, okay? You want to be as complicated as you can, but as correct as you can as well. Now is not the time to experiment with grammatical structures and vocabulary that we don't know. Keep it as simple as you can, as long as it is um, relevant, because the range is appropriate here, as well as the accuracy, okay? So keep those things in mind, guys. Let's now move on to clinical communication skills. So these are your everyday speech patterns that will be relevant in your job itself. They are healthcare specific communication skills when it comes to your speaking, okay? So I've taken the five different criteria. Please look at those in your own time. I'm gonna ask you a few various questions to assess your skills in this, in this field, okay? 
of course, guys, you can use these in your own speaking practice as well, like you're doing with yourself, with a friend, with Swoosh or another academy, whatever you are doing. So number one, did the speaker speak in a way that offered empathy and support? You know that you have to obviously offer empathy and support in the uh, in the speaking test. So make sure, of course, that you are using empathetic phrases to convey empathy. I understand how you feel. I'm sorry that you feel this way. The things that you've been learning in your own practice, okay? And ask questions for support. Two, did the speaker listen to the patient and respond effectively and appropriately? So listening skills are really important in this exam. You have to listen to the patient, pick up on what they're saying, possibly mirror back what they're saying to them, and then answer appropriately to what they have said. Don't go into it having pre-thought what they're going to what you're going to say in advance. That doesn't convey the relevant listening skills. Okay. So number three was delivery information structured appropriately. Top tip I have for OBT speaking is just to follow the structure of the role play card. Don't try and move things about. It just makes it really complicated. So introduce yourself, go through every bullet point, have your questions, answer the bullet point, move on to the next and move through the role play structured and appropriately. Of course, you have to time that within about five minutes for the role play. So roughly each bullet point, depending on how many there are, will be about 40, 45 seconds of answering. So use that as a pacing guide, okay? And four, did the speaker ask a variety of open and closed questions? So an open question is one that doesn't have a set answer. For example, how are you today? Oh, I am very well, thanks, thank you very much. That's an open question. A closed question is one that has a yes, no answer. For example, did you sleep well last night? Yes, I did. No, I didn't. So you need to for, yeah, create a variety of questions, open questions to start the topic, and then close questions to ascertain certain details. So make sure you're using a variety of questions appropriately in the OBT speaking test. Five, ultimately, this is my way of summarizing how I felt as a patient. Was the patient satisfied with the delivery of the information? Okay, was appropriate empathy shown? Did the a medical professional listen to me appropriately and answer appropriately? Did they go through the entire role play from completion? Did they give a satisfactory conclusion? Am I happy with what is happening next in this role play? So that's my way of summarizing how the whole role play went as a whole. So guys, take those in mind and we'll be moving on to these now for our first role play for the day. So this is how it's going to work, guys, is there's going to be a link appearing very soon in uh in the chat box that you're watching this channel on facebook youtube wherever you are watching this channel this chat box will have an invite click on the button it'll invite you into the class today where obviously you'll turn on your camera hopefully have a good working microphone a quiet background and a reasonably fast internet connection once you're in the studio i will see you then I will pick the appropriate student today to do a bit of role play practice with me. So look out for the um, the invite. It says something like StreamYard on it. That's where we're hosting the session today. If you're interested, click on that link, go through the setup instructions and uh, for a chance to do some speaking practice today. Okay, so the link is now coming in to the chat boxes, guys, that I am posting here in, um, I'm posting here in the chats that we have today, guys. So just give me a, give me a second post all of these in and when they appear then you have a chance to do some role play speaking practice with me and I hope of course I'll have numerous of you guys coming in today to do some speaking. Okay guys the links have been dropped into the chat box now we're going to move on to preparing for the role play itself. Okay right next slide. So as you do in the OBT there's a three minute timer. I'm going to be quiet now for three minutes and give you guys a chance to prepare for your role play. The setting is the clinic. Here is the nurse card. Here is the task card. Five bullet points that we have to speak about. I will take the role of the interlocutor, aka the, the patient, once the three minute is up, once someone comes into the session today. Okay, so good luck, guys. Come into the studio, prepare for your role play, and I will see you in two minutes and 30 seconds.
Okay, guys, just going to give another 30 seconds for a bit of preparation time, as it was about 30 seconds I was speaking at the beginning. So take another 30 seconds of preparation time, and we'll begin very soon. Okay then, I guess it's time for us to begin uh, the role play. Hope everyone enjoyed their preparation time and even took into consideration some of the preparation points that I discussed um, ahead of coming into this role play today. Okay, so I have to choose a student to come into the session today. Um, I am going to choose Abram, who is in the session today, to come into the studio. So Abram, I am going to turn on your camera and bring you into the studio in about five seconds. So just make sure you're ready. And three, two, and one. Hello, Abram. Hello. It's very nice to see you. How are you today? Thank you, I'm well. Uh, what about you? I'm very well, thanks, Abram. Where are you from? Thank you. From Egypt. Very good, very good. And why are you taking the OET exam? Uh, honestly, I um, I plan to uh, register as a nurse in the uh, UK. Very good. Well, when do you plan to take the exam and are you feeling ready? No, uh, I don't uh, feel I'm ready. Okay, okay. Make sure that you are ready before you book the OVT exam. That is my best advice for everyone today. But of course, you're here today, Abram, to practice your speaking, which will help you become even more ready, right? Okay. <laughs> okay, Abram. So let's get started with the role play today. Um, are you ready to begin the role play practice? Okay. Brilliant. Okay, so I'm going to start the timer now for about five minutes-ish to begin the role play. Don't think about the time, just go for the role play and enjoy the experience, okay? So Abram, as soon as, okay. you, start, as, soon as you start speaking, we'll begin the time. So over to you when you are ready to begin. Okay. Okay, good luck. Okay. Are you ready, Abram? Okay. Okay. Okay, you can begin. <clears throat> So, good morning. Hello, good morning. How are you today? I, I'm very well. I'm very well, nurse. Thank you very much. Okay. As I understand, you have a, you have a stitch on. The, can you tell me in your own words what brings you here today? Well, I'm here because, as you might know, I've had a lesion removed recently for um, what I think is skin cancer. And 
I'm just a bit worried about what happens next and what the what the surgery is going to mean for me. I'm sorry for here that uh... yes, doc yes, nurse. Um, do, can you tell me? Do I have skin cancer and how serious is this? Okay. Uh, after your examination and your symptom, I believe you have uh, cell carcinoma. Do you have heard about this before? Uh, I, I've heard of squamous cell carcinoma. I'm just worried that I think it's skin cancer. Uh, do, do, you, do you know how serious this is? And will I have more lesions in the future? Okay, I, I appreciate your concern and I, I want to reassure you. Mm -hmm. I, sorry, I'm sorry, I can't continue, sorry, sorry. I'm not ready for this, uh, I'm sorry, sorry. You're Maybe doing another right. one can uh, continue. I, I remember you are, doing, you are doing great. You are doing great. Let's just keep going. You're doing absolutely great. Enjoy the role play and um, do your absolute best. That's what I recommend for you. Okay, okay, okay. Okay? You're doing great. Keep going. Okay, okay. Okay, uh, I will give you some information about squamous cell carcinoma. Yes, please, please, nurse. Thank you. Okay. Uh, mm, skin cancer is caused by sun, sun exposure, ultraviolet radiation, and some reason. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. But I, I, I want to tell... Uh, uh, Please, okay. nurse, sorry. I hear you. But I want to reassure you about effectiveness of surgery, lesion remove. Good, good. I'm I'm really happy for that. Um, I'm worried though. Will I have more lesions in the future? I'm sorry, I can't understand you. Can you repeat this question again, please? I can, nurse. Will I have more lesions in the future? No, no, no. If you didn't exposure again to ultraviolet radiation, you will not, you will not uh, get a, a cell carcinoma. Okay, that's really good to hear. That's really, really good to hear. I do wear um, high factor sunscreen and a hat out in public, but I think I got skin cancer from sun exposure when I was a teenager. Okay, it's it's a very good when you when you cover when uh, when you when you, I can I can I can appreciate that mm -hmm. and recommend it to continue and cover to prevention of uh, further damage. Understand me? Good. I do. Yes, I do. I do. I understand. Um, it's really important for me now that I prevent this from happening. Um, so, nurse, I have my stitches in my wound. What, what happens next? Mm, maybe we... Uh, I recommended you to assist by doctor mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I, I i i want to tell you uh, an important something to keeping the wound clean covered and dry mm -hmm. okay 
Okay. Good. Good. When can I have my stitches removed? Okay. You will typically remove after seven or 14 days. Ah, yes, yes. So that's now, isn't it? Very good. And what should I do after my stitches are removed? What's the aftercare? Okay, I want to tell you uh, an important something. You, you, you have to keep your, your wand clean, covered, and dry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, yes, so keep it clean, dry it, and wash it every so often. Great, very good. Um, well, I'm happy to have my stitches removed, nurse. Is, is that possible? Yes, yes, it, it will, it will in, within uh, seven four, or uh, 14 uh, days. Well, that, that's, that's great. That's great, nurse. Um, well, thank you very much for your time today. I'm now happier about my lesions. Um, I'm happy to get my stitches removed, and I'm happy for the prognosis for my condition. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. All right, Abram. Well done. First and foremost, well done. I really want to give you a big congratulations right Thank now. Thank you. It's the really first I, I, I have uh, done anymore. I, yeah, very good. Very good. And you know what? That's why I wanted to encourage you today, because at one point you thought that you were ready to give up. And I say, no, you must not give up. You must take that first step. And that first step today was doing your first role play. So huge congratulations to you today for taking that first step and doing the first role play. How, how did it go for you? And be nice to yourself. Be nice I, to think, yourself. I think maybe uh, I have a better than this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, indeed, indeed. So what I'm going to do today for you is... What I'm going to give you is just some advice and things that I think you've done really, really well and a few areas of to take away, okay? So you actually have some really good okay. sections as a whole. You have some really, really good sections. I liked um, how you actually use a variety of empathetic language. You use phrases such as, I understand your concerns. I want to reassure you. So you've been doing some practice to use phrases of empathy very, very well, okay? You also were able to complete the role play within five minutes. That's a really, really good thing. And you were able to follow mostly the flow of the role play as a whole. Okay? Top okay. of the areas I want you to focus on. Okay? I want you to really focus on this and get lots of practice. Okay? Your introduction okay. needs, to be more, needs to be more welcoming. Okay? Hello, my name okay. is Nurse Abram. How are you today? Something that welcomes me into the, into the office straight away. Okay? Okay. Good. I also want you to build your confidence. I want you to lead the role play. You need to ask more questions and lead the role play. That will come with practice. That will come with um, more confidence as well. Because I, I understand today's role play, you were doing it online on a screen with a strange teacher like me. It might have been a little bit strange for you. So I understand. But I want you to take control of the role play, build up your confidence, do lots of more speaking practice, learn about the criteria in your lessons that you do with your teacher and lead by asking more questions, okay? Okay. Good. And if, when that gets really good, after you've done these two things, start to structure your role play really effectively together. Go from bullet point to bullet point to bullet point to bullet point, okay? Okay. Okay. One little habit I want you to get out of, okay? I know that we do this because we have things that we stay to, but you say K, 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 K a lot, okay? So I want you to, every time that you say that, just think, Teacher Scott told me not to say K, K, K so much. So I want you to be aware that you say that, 
and have something else that you can say instead, such as, I see, I understand, right. Phrases like that, that can be your little interrupters in a conversation, okay? Okay, okay. Very good, very good. All right, one more small thing I want to say to you as well. When you're asking closed questions to check for understanding, you said, understand me, which is okay, but it's not correct. Something else you can okay. say instead is, is this okay for you? Is this okay for you? Have you written that down, Abram? Is this okay for you? I know, I know. I know. <laughs> I know. It's just when we're doing <laughs> I understand, I understand, but uh, it's the first uh, role play or uh, me, uh, it's the first, uh, the first time I have, um, uh, I have uh, speak with uh, a native speaker it's in my life. In all my life, it's the first time really? I speak to a native speaker. Well, congratulations to me. <laughs> I thank you. Thank you very much. I understand. Uh, and just so you know, this is not me saying you can do this better. So this I, I, I was, the, I was, uh, I was embarrassed. I was embarrassed that uh, maybe shy, may less confident. Uh, you know, you understand me. I completely understand where you're coming from, and I, I am completely understand. It's okay. It's okay that you are this way today because it's a different situation. It's still my job to say this is what went well and this is what I think you can improve on. All right. So I think the main takeaway today, Abram, is just for you to get plenty of more practice with native English speaking teachers to build up your confidence and to build up your flow. All right. Abram, thank you very much All for right. your time today. Did you find the session useful? Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. You're very welcome. Good luck with your OBT preparation, my friend. And well done. Well done today. Big congratulations. Thank you. Welcome. All right, guys. Thank you very much for um, watching the role play alongside myself and Abram today. Let's give him a big clap, by the way, for doing his first role play today. And also speaking to his first native English speaking teacher. So that's me. That's a great honor to me. So let us know in the chat box how you thought he got on today and give him some words of encouragement because he just spoke in front of me. I'm nice, hopefully, and you know, you all feel the same way. You find me approachable. Uh, but also he spoke in front of hundreds of other people online, which I'm sure contributed to some nerves. So wherever we are in our OET journey, I think it's really important that we reflect on how we get how we get better step by step day by day and make those small improvements over time to eventually get to our OBT pass so abram took that first step today into getting ready for his OBT preparation so everyone's sending in lovely 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 comments i'm gonna bring up Allah's um comment today well done we all started like this that is correct Allah. thank you very much for saying that we all start at a level and we're all getting better bit by bit, time after time. So well done. Thank you for the comments. And once again, well done, Abram, for the conversation today and taking that very, very first step. Okay, guys. Well, thank you very much for, of course, taking part in the OET role play with us today. Let's just kind of review the very end of the session, how what we should be thinking about and what we should be putting into practice in our own role plays today. Okay. Now, it's like learning how to drive a car. Or something like this, you know, when we're starting off doing anything, the start needs to be effective because that will build our confidence. If we start off confidently, then the rest of the role play will help us. So make sure you get your role play off to a great start. Introduce yourself and make yourself accessible to the candidates. Invite them to ask a question and then take control of the role play from the very beginning. Second tip I have is to practice speaking at an appropriate speed, not too fast and not too slow. Remember, too quick and you'll make more mistakes. Too slow and your fluency criteria might be affected. So somewhere in the middle, that will be an appropriately fast speed, but will also help with your smoothness of speech and result in less error. So my rule of thumb is take your native, English, your native language speaking speed and go about 70% of that for speaking in English would be a good level of speaking in this language. Now, something to keep in mind is you are going to make mistakes in this. 
So I want you to be prepared mentally. I'm going to make mistakes. Say that to yourself. I'm going to make mistakes. Four. And that's okay. That is completely fine. You are going to make errors. So if you do make an error, don't panic. It's all part of the plan. Correct it quickly if you can. But if you can't, don't worry about it. And move on to the next part of the role play and maintain your flow and maintain your speech because that will get you more marks than correcting an error. So make sure you maintain your speech and maintain your flow over going back, correcting an error, forgetting what you were saying, and therefore ruining your fluency completely. Big, big, big thing to think about. Now, the fourth thing is learn how to use discourse markers effectively. They are markers that inter that kind of segue your language from one section to another. How to join your various parts of speech together. So, for example, ending one bullet point and starting on a second. Let's move on to now. I want to talk about phrases like this. Make sure that you do that, okay, and learn how to use them effectively. Tip number five for reviewing is the power is in the pause, okay? The pause is really effective. By pausing, I mean taking time out for a second, for example. That can happen in the middle of a sentence, pause, or at the end of a sentence, pause. This is very effective because it'll make your speaking more natural, more structured, and will also give you some time to think to your next section. It will also make your delivery much more effective and ensure your patient understands you better than speaking too rapidly from point to point. This point is really, 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 really important in OBT speaking because what's going to happen on the exam day? We're going to feel a bit nervous. And if you're like me, when you're nervous, you will speak very, 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 very rapidly. Very rapidly. So we want to try and be aware of that, take control of that, and slow our speech down best way to do that is by taking that pause every so often. So use the pauses effectively. Now I just want to some general tips before we finish, guys, and that is start your preparation well in advance of your exam, okay? Rule number one, rule of thumb is the most important rule that we talk about at Swoosh English, and that is only book your exam when you are ready. Don't book your exam if you can before you are ready, because then you are giving yourself a limited amount of time Instead, you want an unlimited amount of time to prepare effectively and get exam ready before you book your exam. You will know you are ready because you're going to be acing your speaking, your reading, your writing, and your listening in advance and getting expert feedback from expert teachers and expert skills. Okay. Now, of course, this is a speaking session today. Speaking is a productive skill and it's tricky. Get expert feedback on your speaking like today. Understand how well you're going to score in each of the linguistic criteria in the clinical communication criteria. See what your strengths are and what your weaknesses are. Double down on your strengths, focus and improve your weaknesses. Retest yourself. If you're getting that score, great. You are ready to take the exam. Otherwise, you don't know. And you're taking a big gamble on exam day, whether you'll pass or you're not. Like anyone, practice makes perfect, but make sure you're practicing effectively. You're trying something new each time. All right, you're improving a weakness. You're focusing on a certain skill in your role plays, but you're practicing, you're practicing, and you're practicing, and you're practicing again and again and again and again, but practicing intelligently. And the final thing I want to say is obviously, I talked to Abram today and to everyone else. It's important that you believe in yourself and your abilities to pass this exam. Okay, you might not be there today, but you will be there eventually if you say, I can pass this exam. I will get my abilities done. I will take the necessary steps to pass this exam. And you act upon that because everyone in this room today, this virtual room, has the abilities to pass this exam. It's all about mindset and your approach. So wake up, look in the mirror each morning and say, I can and I will pass this OET exam. And that will help you with everything that you are doing regarding preparation, guys. Hopefully you found that useful. Just a reminder that this is not the only free class that we're offering today at Swoosh English or as a whole, guys. We do free master classes every Friday at 11 a.m. UK time. And guess what? You are invited. The next session is in one hour and 10 minutes. But if you can't attend that session, the next one is every Friday at 11 a.m. 
And in the master classes, we do a variety of different sections and, uh, and trainings, including top tips for each subtest. We talk about the do's and the don'ts of OET of preparation, speaking, writing, listening, and, and reading, all covered, mindset, approaches, everything else. We also understand what kind of student you are in the session. And based on the kind of student you are, we actually construct a plan for you to get OET ready, plus lots, lots more. So if you're in, and I hope you are, it is completely free, you might as well get signed up. There are a few ways that you can join this free masterclass. First of all, click the link that's going to appear in wherever you are watching this channel on OET, uh, Facebook or YouTube or Spoosh English Facebook and YouTube. Click on the link that says free masterclass to join your free OET masterclass session. The second way that you can do that is by getting your phone out, bringing out your QR code reader and scanning this QR code. OK, so I'll leave this up for a few seconds. If you want to scan that QR code now and register for the masterclass and then we'll take care of the rest for you, ensuring you are placed in the session and join the next masterclass as it happens, guys. So click on this QR code that's right here on the screen or click the link that's in the chat. For some reason, if any of these options can't work for you and you can't click on the link, you can't scan the QR code, well, then give our team an email at inquiries at swooshenglish.com. That's inquiries at swooshenglish.com. Give our team an email and just simply ask, I want to join the masterclass. Nice, simple email to our team. We'll respond as quickly as possible, get you registered. And also, you can use this email address to get in touch with my team anytime to hear more about how we can help you pass your OET exam quickly and effectively. So let's just recount these three options. To join the masterclass, one, click the link in the chat. You should see that now. Option two is to scan the QR code on the right-hand side of the screen and then sign up that way. Or three, give us an email at inquiries at swooshenglish.com and our team will be happy to help you by um, just asking to join the masterclass. Nice and simple like that. All right, guys. Well, thank you very much for joining the session today. I much, much appreciate everyone coming and giving some time today to this, uh, this session. Hope that you enjoyed it. Let us know in the chat box if you've enjoyed this session today. Um, even let us know what kind of lessons you would love for us to cover in the OVT All-Star sessions and beyond. And also, if you enjoyed the session today, Ensure that you are following the channel you are watching. You say you're following a the YouTube, the, the Facebook channel, and you are subscribed to the YouTube channel that you're on, regardless if that's the Swoosh English channel or the OET channel. We are dedicated to giving you lots of content to help you prepare for your OET exam. So make sure you leave today by liking us, writing a comment, and also following the channel that you are watching. So guys, thank you so much for coming along to the session today once again. Well done to Avram for taking his first time speaking to a native English speaking teacher. That's a quite a big task and quite a big undertaking for someone. And also for doing his first role play in front of hundreds of others. If he can take that step of confidence today for joining the session, then you guys can also do the exact same thing. So good luck with your OET preparation if you're taking it tomorrow, 2nd of December, as a lot of you said, or beyond. We are very, very happy to help you further and wish you the best of luck with your OVT preparation. I'm Scott from Swoosh English. Hope to see some more of you in the masterclass that we're running in one hour and seven minutes time or the next ones that we run. So take care. Have a great day. Good luck with your OVT preps, prep. And uh, thanks for joining. Bye-bye.